Hello, I'm tracking light snow on nappycast.com. Let's take a look at it now on the radar screen. And there's some snow out towards the island. So you want to forget our friends off the coastline here where this snow is being picked up. You see that right here, just off the mid coast, heading up down east, right here, Penobscot Bay, right here. So watch out for that snow. It will be light. Uh, this is mostly going to be a light event, a dusting to a few inches. Uh, the radar beam has a tough time picking up on this stuff, uh, generally because it starts to shoot up into the sky the farther it is away. There's gray where the beam is right now coming out that I have uh, highlighted. Then we look up towards Caribou, uh, and this is where the other beam for the radar is. This one is really going to have a tough time picking up on any snow uh, in Penobscot Bay, uh, and especially up towards the Down East coastline. So Eastport, uh, Lubeck, uh, Machias, Jonesport, Cutler. Um, so watch out here this afternoon as the snow is going to push up towards the north and the east. So uh, I'll show you that now here on the forecast surface analysis. So this is what's happening right now. We've got a pretty uh, weak uh, cold front off to the west in the Great Lakes. It is moisture starved this front. See that coming through here. There's not a lot of moisture. I'll talk about that in a second. High pressure off the coast of uh, Nova Scotia. And a light southwesterly breeze here. So temperatures warming up just a little bit. We also have uh, more moisture in the atmosphere. You see with the cloud cover going on right now. And eventually some light snow. So look at the forecast here the next couple of days. And show that front that's going to come through when it's moisture starved. So think about a storm or someone coming from the Pacific, right? And that's where they've got a full tank of gas on that car. But by the time they make it east, what happens is... That storm or that car with that gas tank, it, without refueling from the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic, it just runs out of gas. It runs out of steam, runs out of gas, and runs out of moisture. So we don't get much at all from this. Technically, it's a short wave kind of coming through a little trough in the atmosphere, a weakness in the atmosphere. So there's just not a lot of moisture. There's no gas left in the tank. So we're not going to get a lot out of this. There's some enhancement off the coast here. Temperatures here with a southwesterly breeze, 25, 24, 16, Portland, Bangor, Presque Isle. This is at this afternoon, Thursday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So the wind out of the southwest, I wouldn't call it warm out, but certainly that is warming things up uh, quite a bit from where they've been lately. So I'll take the forecast model out here. We'll go into Thursday night, and I'll show you what's going to happen here. Temperatures are going to fall off again. Now, even though that front that comes through that car with not a lot of moisture, it is going to have some cold air to it, even though it's a weak front or a car that doesn't have a lot left in the tank. So we are going to cool back off again on Friday. Notice the wind here Friday is out of the northwest, but the real cold air with this doesn't really get in until Friday night. Watch here. This is Saturday morning, cold wake up time. We'll call it seven o'clock in the morning. So yeah, we're back into the deep freeze. Bangor, Presque Isle, Portland are back in a place like, yeah, obviously single digits here popping up. So uh, we're cooling off. We're going to stay cool uh, on Saturday for the most part. So be prepared for a cool one on Saturday. But by on Sunday, you'll watch what happens here. On Sunday, this is going to be Sunday afternoon. Watch the time code here. Four o'clock. Look at this west winds. So there's a land breeze here coming around high pressure. 33 Portland. 30 in Bangor, Presque Isle, 25. It's the warmest you've been in, in a long time. So the ending the weekend and starting next week on a much milder note here, you see Monday of next week. Once again, we're back into that west and southwesterly breeze here. So that warms things up just a bit here. We get to the freezing mark in southern Maine and mid-20s uh, up in northern Maine. So that is going to be the trend here, second half of the week and next week. The reason why this uh, car coming down the weather highway or this little shortwave trough, this weak cold front, weak system coming through is moisture starved is because and it's not going to get refueled. The, the subtropical jet here coming here out of the Gulf of Mexico just doesn't have a lot of moisture and it is cut off. It's not making it here. The moisture is not really going to make it up towards the Northeast and New England. So we're not going to get... A big storm out of this, there's very, very little moisture to work with here. Now, I want to talk about the long range a bit. So, here's a look at the 
I call it the uh, the cold weather highway, the Arctic Oscillation. So call it like uh, up in the, the North Pole where the cold air is generally this time of the year. So we'll look here. This is what has happened, this blue line. We had that dip. That was that real cold snap that we had. And then watch what happens here. Things are going to start to moderate just a bit. We're going to go positive on the Arctic Oscillation. And because of that, you'll notice here that things start to warm up. But there's a little dip here, late January, early February. So this is when I would look at the next opportunity for something to be a snowstorm. Now, typically, I mean, generally, you need cold air unless a storm makes its own cold air. So this would be a time frame, so late January, early February, for when I would look at for the next opportunity. Now, this is just the European model look at things. This is not a an in-depth look at the ensembles. And if I show you the ensembles here, it, it doesn't look as promising. So this is a look at the ensembles here. So the ensembles is like the average of a bunch of the computer model runs. There's 50 50 runs here of the computer. So it's a lot more reliable, especially long range. So you get out here, so you get end of January and February. And notice here, this is not a negative outlook. So this does not, to me, give a lot of confidence that we are going to get an Arctic outbreak or enough cold air for snow. Uh, but there's an opportunity there. It's just not as much of a lock or a guarantee. Once again, it's either one computer run or run, the European, or it's a look at the average of all the runs, the 50 runs. And if you take the average, there's not as much of an anomaly there, which makes me believe I have less confidence in a snowstorm as we go farther out. So I will show you, though, that one kind of run here. Now, we go long range. We're going to go into Tuesday. This is more of a mountain snow situation next week here. You see this is all mostly mountain stuff, also up in the county. Uh, and then I'll push things out a bit. Let me erase that and then push things out a bit. And then I'm going to show you into early, uh, late, late January, early February. This is what I was just showing you on the computer models. So here, this is just one run. Here's your storm. Okay. It's a weak signal, but there is some opportunity for snow there. And this is valid Friday, January 31st. But it's not an ensemble run, so I don't have a lot of confidence in it. Just one run of a computer model. Uh, and then we go out, this is what people will start talking about, and look at this big storm, February 3rd. Now, here's the problem with this. You have a big storm, right? Bunch of snow. Yesterday, this was all rainy. It was an in inside runner yesterday. Today, it's off right along the coastline, the coastal hugger. It's, it you know, basically looks like a nor'easter. Here's the problem. This is just one computer model run for February 3rd. One. Yesterday, it was rain. Today, it's snow. And the models are going to flip-flop. The issue I have here is that the ensemble look at this is, once again, not overly promising. It doesn't show enough cold air. Nevertheless, I will show you up in the weather highway, about 25,000, 30,000 feet up in the sky. I will show you what's going on. So you've got your kind of polar vortex here spinning right here over eastern Canada. So we have a little influence of that. We've got a little bit of a trough in the atmosphere so we're obviously going to see some cold air kind of reinforcing short waves to come through, like, you know, cars racing along the weather highway with just, just bringing cold air, not a lot of storms. But watch here as we get to late January, we start to see a little bit of a storm signal. But again, this is one computer model run in early February. And this is that where I just showed you. There's that storm. It's a little kind of kink. And, and because of that, there's your storm right here that's moving into New England around February 2nd, February 3rd, okay? But I'll say this one more time. Take it with a grain of salt because it's one computer model run, right? Only one. And if I go back to the ensembles again, because I'm going to keep going back to this, you look at the average run. This is the average back to the ensembles. And what you have here is we get into that time frame I just showed you early February. If you're hoping for snow, if you need snow, is somewhat of a ridge. You, you don't have that trough that you need for that big storm. You've got a ridge. So this leads me to believe until the ensembles, the average you know, model runs line up with the individual runs or the operational runs, I don't get confident about a storm that's five, six, seven, ten days out. I'll still show it to you. It, it's nice to look at if you're hoping for this, but 
I don't expect this to happen at this time. I'm not confident about it. But there it is. That is your storm. There's your nor'easter. There's your bona fide snowstorm for February 3rd. It is January 23rd. So if you want to go out, you know, 10 days, right, you're going to need things to line up. And right now they don't line up. So right now, I do not expect this to happen right now. Tomorrow, the next day, as we start to see maybe some, you know, agreement on the ensemble runs, then that would be great because we need it. Obviously, look at the drought that's been going on still, still in a moderate drought for a good chunk of Maine. So just south of the Katahdin region, a good chunk of down east, mid coast, southern coast, southwest interior, still in a, in a well, I'm call it significant, but it certainly is a moderate drought. When the severe drought is gone, but it's a moderate drought going on across Maine. So here's your forecast on nappycast.com. You can go there anytime. Make sure your location services are enabled. And here we go. Today's forecast, Thursday, January 23rd. Light snow down east, about 1 to 3 down east coastline. Typical high is 28. Mountains are going to be 16. Inland 26, coast 29. Wind southwest. And with a southwesterly breeze, we're starting to warm things up just a little bit, right? Just enough where yeah, maybe you're thinking about going outside. Uh, and then for, let me go back up here to, this is the forecast for tomorrow, forecast Friday, January 24th. I have sun and clouds in the forecast, really more sun than clouds. Um, and then the typical high is still 28, coldest time of the year. And the mountains are 16, but look what happens here at the coast and inland, 32 and 29. So temperatures there warming up just a bit with that wind out of the northwest that you know slightly warms the coastal plain just a bit. Um, and then the forecast here on Nappy's Notes, it's light snow down east, one to three inches coming. We do warm up second half of the weekend and the next storm trend, which I just showed you available on, I'll put that on a weather blog on jasonnappyweather.com in about a half hour or so once I upload this, uh, this video. So inland, the forecast for Friday, January 24th, notice here 29, 25, then 36, 35. So there is your warm up. There's your warm-up into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We get above freezing. So there we go. And then next week here. Now, as far as the snow goes, right, I just have Tuesday as an opportunity here for some light snow. Nothing, no big promises there. And then I, I do have it in there for next week as an opportunity for snow. But I'm not going to get my hopes up or your hopes up for that, even though we need the precip, we need the snow. But that is the only real opportunity, real shot. Um, as we get obviously into February. So the coast, the 10 day forecast, a lot more sunshine than the mountains, 32, 28, 39. So a little roller coaster ride here as we're going up and then down and then up. So here behind this cold front that's going to come through there. Uh, and then next week, notice here we're starting off on a run for 40. Not a lot of snow in the forecast, or even like kind of snow even over to rain Tuesday with temperature 39. And then next week, it is a bit cooler, but there's no major Arctic outbreak there. It is a bit cool Wednesday, Thursday. For the mountains, not a lot of snow coming. I think Tuesday is your best shot, especially in the mountains. 22, there's your you know cold snap, negative 2. And then next week, negative 3, negative 2, some cold nights. And then I have that snow up there for Friday. Uh, for the Mariners, the forecast here on nappycast.com that I showed you, it's always there every day for... Uh, the next 48 hours. You always have the forecast for nappycast.com. On jasonnappyweather.com, I have my blog here, which always has the current video that I'm uploading right now. And it also has my live stream that's on YouTube. You can watch on YouTube 24 seven, plus the blog post. If you want to just read about the weather and look at the weather maps behind the scenes, you can click on this and I'll have it updated uh, very soon here and shortly. Thank you for watching Jason Nappy Weather. Subscribe for free on Facebook and YouTube. Have a great rest of your day.